So today we're going to be talking about the work environment in Nigeria for medical doctors. And I will be very particular about the young doctors. It's a rant, by the way. <laughs> so welcome to my rant. You know, I'm going to be very particular about the young doctors because that is one thing that concerns me. And also, I do not want that to become the reality of those that are coming behind me. Who are we striking against when we say we go on strike? Minister of Health is a medical doctor. CMDs of hospitals, medical doctors. CMAC, medical doctor. Director of Clinical Services, medical doctor. So who exactly are we striking against when we go on strike? Who are we fighting? Can a house be divided against itself? But I think that's the case for the Nigerian Medical Association. It's like an autoimmune disease, you know, fighting itself, destroying the host. We are destroying ourselves. And the fact is, we keep going on these strikes without properly addressing the issues. So we take a one a one week strike or a one month strike and it's just like a mini holiday let's just be honest with ourselves if you want to go on a holiday say you want to go on a holiday don't go on a strike action that yields no results and i'm sorry this might rub off you know the wrong way this might piss off some people but i'm sorry and i'm still not sorry at the same time because let's be honest with ourselves there is a strike action people go on strike and then we come back to the same issues Case in point, the death of doctors. And I'm not talking death as in D-E-A-R-T-H. No, I'm talking death as in D-E-A-T-H. Death of young doctors. We are losing, we are hemorrhaging doctors to Jackpa and we are hemorrhaging them to their graves. Are we not tired? Why should any sane person, you know, use a one week call or a 48 hour call or a, 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 a 74, 72 hour call as punishment. Does that make sense? We say we want to protect the lives of people. We say we are here to help people. And then you put a person on call for 72 hours straight without adequate rest. And you think this person will perform at peak optimal. Come on, who are we kidding? Not only are we risking the lives of the doctor, but we are also risking the lives of the patients. I'm going to ask a question. If you are flying from Abuja to Lagos, or no, let's use the new one, from Nigeria to the UK, and you hear that your pilot has not slept for the past 24 hours, or even at... <laughs> will you enter that flight? Even with all your jackpot preparations. But you can do that to a human being. Put a person on autopilot to just... Cost through 72 hours on call as punishment. Where is your humanity? And then he drops dead. And the next thing, he's a hashtag. And you feign anger. You cry on social media. Hashtag justice for the Nigerian doctors. Meanwhile, in your own hospital, as a resident, this is your staple punishment. Who are we kidding? Let's talk about the death of Dr. Vary. May her soul rest in peace. HR was informed. CMD was informed. CMAC was informed. Hospital administration was informed. And many of those positions are headed by doctors. And yet, we lost a young doctor. You know, the worst part of it was that she was in that place for over an hour or so. I think that's the gist, over an hour. And she, she, she was alive and she was taken to the emergency. And nobody made preparation for the coming of this emergency. Nobody made available blood in the bank. Are you trying to tell me that you don't know Dr. Vary's blood group? And I'm pretty sure she has donated blood to that hospital several times for patients. Nobody made preparations no resident said to the house officers go and make sure this is ready make sure there's oxygen make sure there's this make sure there's that nobody made sure those things were available and she <sighs> there are roasters that come out and you see a doctor on call for a week a month why because the federal government has made provisions for a certain number of house officers to be taken but a CMD somewhere 
a hospital administrator somewhere has taken the funds required to have 20 house officers in a facility and only released budget for two. So there's an alternation. Today I'm on call. The next week is my colleague. Fatigue. We are mentally and physically exhausted because of the greed of those that are supposed to protect us. And then we call for strike. Who are we striking against? Who are we fighting? You know where the people perpetrating this evil are. Why don't you take this fight to them? The Minister of Health, past and present, Dr. Haba. At this point, I think we should have some shame. We should be very ashamed of ourselves. These are the things we don't talk about in our monthly meetings. These are the things we don't talk about in our general meetings. Instead, we come and we fight on how to share money. I will never forget the one time I went for the Nigerian Medical Students Association uh, general meeting. The president was a house officer. The president of the Nigerian Medical Association, uh, Medical Students Association was a house officer who had stolen over 90 million naira. Sat on his high horse, talking to us medical students. I was in 500 level then. This was held in uh, uh, OOU, in Shagam. Talking to us as if we had, we, we didn't know what we were doing there. I called him out on it, told him, you don't speak to people like that. These funds are missing. Where are they? Why are you a house officer and you are in charge of medical students? What they do is that they purposely fail a course so that they can stay back and write the receipt and then become the president. They are backed by residents. They are backed by consultants. That night, they said they were going to impeach him. What happened? He started getting calls. Say getting calls from the CMD, say getting calls from the uh, the head of the NERD, the Southwest NERD. It was ridiculous. He was not impeached. He handed over. I saw residents, I saw people, and they told me, ah, that's a resident, not a not a medical student. Travel from wherever they were coming from to come and vote in the Nigerian Medical Students Association. Ha! Our corruption runs deep. You talk about the government. You say the government does not provide funding. The government does not do this. When more funds are provided and somebody somewhere takes it. I'm sure funds were provided for that elevator to be fixed. And the CMD and her cohort or whoever else, somebody somewhere took it. And Dr. Barry died. And then there was an outcry. And then she became a hashtag. That's the worst thing to be in Nigeria. A hashtag. Hashtag justice. Hashtag justice. And then everybody moves. Once that is over, once the protest matches are over, once the, the situation dies down, you become just another story. Nothing tangible results. Come on. At what point do we start to prioritize ourselves as human beings? Doctors are dying in Nigeria. They are not just dying from the fact that they do not even have money to feed or treat themselves because they are not being paid salaries. They are not just dying from elevator mishaps. They are not dying from being beaten or being stabbed by their patients. We go through enough already to have this become another one of our problems. Let us know where our problems are coming from and let us know how to prefer solutions to them. This is an autoimmune disease. Our strike actions are just, it's just that, it's just a reaction. A reaction to what self? We are just kill, we are killing ourselves by whatever it is we think we are doing. But if we do not properly sit down and address these issues, nothing tangible results from this.
this is going to actually be a two-part series because I want to get the I want to also understand the perspective of other doctors. I want people to come and talk about this. Maybe I'm the one that is not understanding it. Maybe I'm the one that does not understand why NMA or NARD goes on strike when they know who to hold accountable. Maybe I'm the one that is not seeing the big picture. Maybe I need other people to open my eyes to a fresh perspective. Maybe then I can get the understanding that is required. But this is actually, this is, this is, it. I'm just, I think of, I don't even know where to start from. I don't know where to start from. Is it the fact that only two house officers were on call for a year? in the great UI, UCH or whatever, yeah, UCH. Then the fact that there was only a house officer in one unit attending to all the surgical patients. Is it the fact that there was only one house officer attending to all the patients in internal medicine? Or one resident, one junior reg? At what point do we say enough is enough? At, at what point do we actually sit down and start addressing the real issues? At what point do we no longer let doctors become hashtags? At maybe, maybe finally somebody starts to hear me. Maybe finally somebody decides that it's time for us to have a roundtable discussion and and not shy away from the real issues, from the truth, the bitter, bitter truth. This will always remain your favorite show, Diagnosis. Maybe through the show, maybe somebody hears. And maybe, just maybe, we no longer will end up as hashtags. Until then, let's just keep thinking and talking.